And then at the end, we'll have special time for um, to ask questions and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead with just the quick presentation here. Um, and so what inclusive excellence is so for the university inclusive excellence is um, kind of our mission behind making sure that everyone is included and represented in the conversations. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and so inclusive excellence um, its broad definition means um, academic merging of academic excellence and inclusiveness, um, as well as viewing diversity as just not a number, but creating an inclusive, uh, inclusive atmosphere, and then focusing on structural cultural transformations within the university. Um, and we see diversity as something that unites us as a campus, um, and we want to make sure that all of our students um, feel connected. And so, of course, um, we are going to do a quick shout out to apply. So if you haven't applied to the university already, um, feel free to do that. Our application is completely free um, and available at right.edu slash apply. Um, our application deadline to qualify for scholarships is February 1st. Um, so that's going to be here before you know it. So we just want to make sure that we encourage you to apply if you haven't already. And so this next slide is going to be the video and I'm going to go ahead and hopefully it loads here and play it um, again. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat while the video plays. College with a disability. Welcome each Hold on a second. I'm going to need to turn the volume up a little bit. So just give me one second here. Later up, attending college with a disability by the Office of Disability Service. Later up, attending college with a disability by the Office of Disability Services at Wright State University. I want to welcome you to the Raider Up presentation for disability services at Wright State. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the support services we provide at Wright State University and giving some detailed information on our demographics, the types of supports we provide, the types of disabilities that we, we cover, and ways to be prepared for the college environment. Thanks for joining us. I want to talk a little bit about the types of disabilities that we Sorry guys, I don't know why it keeps pausing. I promise I tested this out before we started and it was working just fine. So let me try this again. Those that we typically see as part of giving some detailed information on our demographics, the types of supports we provide, the types of disabilities that we, we cover, and ways to be prepared for the college environment. Thank you. And if hearing services for the blind, as well as traumatic brain injuries and mental health. Actually, 87% of students who are registered with the Office of Disability Services at Wright State have an invisible disability. So although we're very well known for serving our students who have severe mobility impairments, they do not make up the bulk of the students who are registered with our office. And we want to make sure that students with all types of disabilities know that they are welcome to register and receive accommodations with us. This is our staff. We have a director, Tom Webb. Our associate director is Heather Rando, and she supervises our case management group. And included as our case managers are uh, Angie Maston, 
In addition to the case management, she also handles our data management. Evan Mason, who handles uh, case management and workforce develop de development. Um, Catherine Myers, that's me. And in addition to uh, handling the uh, my caseload, I also deal with personal assistance and uh, assistive technology. And then our newest staff member is Kyla Arroyo, and she's our liaison for STEM and uh, health sciences. And then we have our other staff members who are headed up by Shonda Jones, who is our office manager and works with note taking in our deaf and hard of hearing services. Sherry Penwell is going to be one of your favorite people if you use test proctoring. She's our test proctoring coordinator. And then Donna Harris handles our technology center where we uh, put our, our textbooks into alternative formats and make sure that they are electronically accessible for you. There are some major differences between accommodations allowed in the K-12 system versus accommodations at the college level. In the K-12 system, students are eligible for accommodations under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. And with these types of programs, a student might qualify for an IEP or Individual Education Program or a 504 plan. In the K-12 system, students are entitled to free and appropriate education. Appropriate education can mean the modification of the curriculum. And the purpose of these laws are to ensure student success. Students um, are supposed to be identified by the school system, which is why there are so many screenings that happen in um, kindergarten through third grade. Um, to try and help identify students who might have different types of disabilities. And parents and teachers are the ones who create and implement these accommodation plans and are responsible for ensuring that the students uh, comply with them. At the college level, it's very different. Students are eligible for academic accommodations under the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Rehabilitation Act. Um, but they are entitled to access to content. So a good example of this is if I have a student who is blind, they are still expected to attend the class, listen to the lectures, um, read the books, take the tests, write the papers, whether assignments for the course, but how they might accomplish that might be different from their sighted peers. So their books might be in braille or an audio format, they might um, take their tests on a computer versus a pencil paper test and have the computer read the test to them. They might need a scribe or copies of notes from one of their peers, have an audio recording of the class that they go back later and take notes from. But they're still completing all the essentials of the class on the same grading scale as their peers and on the same timeline. College accommodations are about equal access to materials. It does not guarantee success. Students must also self-identify. So oftentimes this is gonna be documentation that was created during the K-12 system, but sometimes um, a student might acquire accommodation as a, or acquire a disability as an adult. They might um, develop new disabilities over time. And so the student needs to reach out to our office and say, I have a disability and I need reasonable accommodations for them. Also, it's the student's responsibility to understand the accommodations that they qualify for and to choose to use them. Sometimes students decide that they either don't want to register with us or after they register with us, then they don't want to utilize their accommodations. And that's fine as an adult, the students are allowed to make that choice, but we do not provide retroactive accommodations. So it is important that students, when they're considering whether or not they need accommodations for a course, um, that they weigh that very carefully. So this next slide focuses on admission criteria to Wright State. And basically, a student with a disability still has to meet the same admission requirements as all students. And so things that incorporate that are uh, a high school diploma with the Ohio core curriculum or an equivalent 
rigorous curriculum and at least a 2.0 GPA at the high school level. And we review those in a holistic process where we look at a number of different factors and not just GPA. So basically that recommended coursework is, is listed at the bottom of the slide there. We're looking at four years of English, four years of math, including algebra two or an equivalent, three years of science, three years of social studies, including American history, American government, and an econ or financial literacy course, two years of a foreign language, and one fine arts course. Here are the steps you need to take in order to get accommodations at Wright State. Step one is to complete our online application, which is separate from your Wright State admission application. Step two is to submit documentation, which can include your IEP, 504 plan, and your ETR. You can also submit documentation of physical, psychological, or other disabilities. The last step is to attend a college accommodation plan meeting with your case manager. For more information, you can visit right.edu slash ODS. You and your case manager will work to create an access plan, which is a plan that describes the accommodations that are reasonable and make the most sense for you. Your case manager will be assigned based on your last name. For students with last names of A, B, and C, your case manager will be Angie Maston. For students last names F, G, Q, R, and S, your case manager will be Evan Mason. For students with the last name D, E, N, O, and P, your case manager will be Heather Rando. For students whose last names are H through M, your case manager will be Catherine Myers. And for students whose last names start with T through Z, your case manager will be Kyla Arroyo. Once a student has completed the accommodation plan meeting, they'll have access to their AIM portal. And this is where they can independently manage a lot of their accommodation needs. So they can request their accommodations for the upcoming semester. If they have um, some accommodations that are a little more intensive, such as alternative format, C print transcriptions, um, they can also manage and access that information through the portal. They can request an appointment with their case manager um, through an appointment request link in the portal. And also students would go there to electronically sign an information release. At the college level, if a student wishes for their case manager to be able to speak with their parent, they would need to sign a release of information stating that the case manager is allowed to give information to their parent, their guardian, um, their instructor, their academic advisor, whomever. Otherwise, that, accom that accommodation and disability related information is strictly kept within our office. At this time, all staff of the Office of Disability Services are working remotely. You can still connect with us through email, phone, or WebEx. Every weekday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., we host a virtual walk-in hours where you have a chance to talk with one or two staff members about any short question you might have. To find more information about this, please visit right.edu slash ODS. The most common accommodation provided for our students are test accommodations. Typically, this is um, extended time for a test and or reduced distraction environment for the test. This semester is operating a little bit differently. Almost every single test is being administered remotely by the instructors already. And so um, typically right now, the thing we're seeing most common is extended time for the test. One thing to consider is that for our online management system pilot at the university, the instructor is the only person who can extend the time window for a student individually for that test. So again, making sure that the student requests their accommodations with plenty of notice to give the instructor time to make that change in the system. Our technology center can convert print, textbooks, and other materials into accessible formats that meet the needs of our students. You can consult Donna Harris on how to convert scanned documents, pictures, and graphs. Students and staff also have access to census access to convert documents on their own. Accommodations for deaf and hard of hearing students. 
Closed captions. Their captions of spoken words and sounds can be added to videos for class. We need a minimum of 48 hours notice to be able to add in the captions. CPrint is available for live lectures, meetings, group work. An employee from Interpreters of the Deaf can be added to the course and type everything in real time. The student is then able to access this text through their phone, tablet, or computer. ASL interpreting. An American Sign Language interpreter can be assigned remotely to interpret real-time lectures, meetings, and group work. Housing accommodations can include things like an extra refrigerator for medicine, an automatic door opener, and wheelchair accessibility. Things that are above and beyond what are required by law are for personal care assistance program, just my area of expertise. Um, we can provide assistance with bathing, dressing, toileting, those grooming and uh, personal care, very personal care in an individual basis. This is a program that there is a charge for. It's fee based and uh, some students who are on waivers can uh, actually uh, work with an agency for that because we are not a Medicaid waiver pro uh, provider. But we do have a personal assistance station located in the student union that is we do not charge for it. It is open during the days and limited services on the weekend. Secondly, we offer behavior and skills coaching support for students on the autism spectrum who are transitioning from high school to college. And that program is called the RAISE program, which is an acronym for Raiders on the Autism Spectrum Excelling. Our office is also a coordinator for the Workforce Recruitment Program, which is um, a national program for federal employment. And we've had tremendous success in helping our students obtain internships and full-time employment with the local Wright-Patterson Air Force Base here in the Dayton area, as well as a variety of other federal employers. Lastly, we have our own service dog park on campus. And so we see the student in our photo here with her service dog at the service dog park. It has an electronic gate opener. So the student can uh, press a remote control that they would obtain from our office to open the gate for them. And then um, there are paved paths in the service dog park, um, waste disposal stations, and a um, water fountain specifically for the dogs. And this is a great opportunity for our service dogs who work so hard assisting their students 24 hours a day to have an opportunity to have some time off and get to play. We're very fortunate to get a grant in order to help us open this dog park back in 2008. And it has been a very popular um, stop for our service dogs on campus ever since. The great thing about Wright State is there are so many ways to connect with campus. You can get involved with the LGBTQA identity group, the faith organizations, the cultural identity groups, veteran and military center, Greek life, and so many more. Mental health services are available through counseling and wellness services to all Wright State students. You can sign up for individual sessions through phone or video, group counseling sessions via WebEx, and some topics may include mindful eating, mindfulness, safe haven for LGBTQA students, and students with disabilities. Raider Cares is a 24-hour emergency support line where you can connect with a trained counselor any time of the day. Wright State provides academic support services, which consist of the writing center. They're able to help with all stages of the writing process for all courses, the math help room to support with a variety of math courses, tutoring, which focuses on academic improvement in a specific course, study coaches improve organization time management for all courses, great skills to have throughout college. There are many recreation opportunities available to students too. Our rec center has a wide variety of equipment, and that includes lots of adapted equipment. Workout partners are available for students with disabilities to ensure safe and effective exercise. And there are also many intramurals available to students. This slide, in addition to the adorable doggy on the screen, offers some more specific keys to success for students with disabilities. 
And the first is to understand your disability, what your accommodations are, what has and has not worked in the past and why, and, and the ability to let other people know what that is. You want to make sure you're taking responsibility for your journey and looking at the ways that you're doing things well, as well as the things that you need to improve. And finally, you want to have good self advocacy skills. So know when and where to ask for assistance, know and utilize your resources, and then have good problem solving skills. And if there's something that you need help with, learning who you can ask and asking. Depending on how well prepared you feel for this transition from high school to college, you might want to consider a supplemental preparatory program. Um, maybe working with one of the local learning centers in order to help strengthen your math or your writing skills. Landmark College has some programs specifically for students with disabilities in order to help them prepare themselves for a four year institution. And Marshall University has a program for students with on the autism spectrum to help them prepare for the transition to a university program. Please research and choose the program that is best for you. To learn more, visit us at right.edu slash ODS. You can also give us a call at 937-775-5680 or email us at disability underscore services at right.edu. All right, and I've also included all this information here, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can see all of our panelists faces. Um, because during these videos, everyone gets really small um, and I also figured out why the video wasn't working is because I was checking the chat. So I hadn't had a chance to look at the chat. So I'm going to do that right now and see if we have any questions. But I just want to remind our attendees that you can put your questions in the chat. And let me just pull it up here. Um, so the first question I have is if you are a high school student, when should be the first time that you reach out to um, your offices to inquire about services? Who wants to take it? Angie, you want to take it? Sure thing, Tom Webb. Um, so definitely during your senior year. So right now, if you were a, call, or a high school senior um, and you have not reached out to our office yet, this is a perfect time to do so. Um, even if you haven't finished that application process, you can still get the ball rolling, um, work with your high school to have copies of your documentation sent to our office. Um, if you're not a senior yet, you can still ask for a consultation appointment to speak with one of the case managers so we can give you an idea of what your college accommodations might look like and also some things you can do to help you be prepared for that transition. So we've even talked to students as early as their freshman year in high school, depending on the severity of their needs um, and their proactiveness. Awesome, thank you. Um, would anyone want to dive in a little deeper about like what paperwork, because I, I've run into this with students. I say, well, you just need to get your paperwork to this office and they say what paperwork and I don't have the answer. So this could be informative for the people on and myself. So if anyone wants to uh, indulge a little bit there. Heather, you want to take your muted, but if you could take it. So basically what we mean by paperwork is documentation of your disability, and that might look different depending on the disability. If it's a physical or medical disability, that might be a form completed by your, your family doctor or someone who's who has diagnosed the condition for which you're registering. Um, if you have a mental health condition, that might be a, a therapy provider or someone who's providing your meds. Um, if it is learning disability, it's likely going to be some testing that you had conducted while in the K through 12 system, and that's called an ETR or an MFE. And that also um, might include an IEP or 504 plan. Uh, that also will work for a couple other disabilities like ADHD, anything that you've received services for in high school. 
This needs to be turned in to our office after you fill out the application and then we'll have what's called a college accommodation plan meeting where we sit with the student and talk about what's worked in the best. We take a look at what they've had in the past and then we see what can carry over at the college level because the law changes between high school and college. So that IEP and 504 that you have in the K through 12 system changes form to protection under ADA law and the Rehab Act 504 plan. Does anybody else want to add to the doc question for us? I think you covered it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, is there any like support groups or groups in general for students to meet other students with disabilities? Heather, that might be more you than others in terms of at least within your area. Well, the program that I coordinate is called the RAISE program, and that's uh, was uh, alluded to in the video. It stands for Raiders on the Autism Spectrum Excelling. And so that can be uh, any student who's coming out of the high school environment or transferring from another university where they're getting used to the right state system and how to be a college student. And so basically what that is, it's a mentorship program by peers where they're matched with someone who does not have an autism diagnosis to learn five key areas of support. And those include time management and organization, social skill development, resiliency, self-advocacy, and study skills at the college level. Now, this is a fee-for-service program, as we talked about in the video. So this means that this is separate from an accommodation. This is what's known as a service. So students can elect to do this. And in order to be part of the RAISE program, uh, the student and their family, if they choose, need to have a consult with me for about an hour to just get a sense of the things they're already doing really well and the ways that we can support them at this level. And there is, a, as I mentioned, a small fee for this program that can be directly uploaded to the Bursar account and paid for by, by means that others that students use like loans, grants, and uh, third party payers. Um, another question that we had in the chat is that a student has a regular campus visit scheduled in January um, and was wondering how they could also meet with your office during that time. So we're currently doing everything remotely, so we can certainly connect like we are now individually over WebEx. Uh, and we're happy to schedule something with you just reach out um, with the information that's provided at the end of our. Uh, presentation here and um, we're happy to, to get something set up. Um, and we can also help in the admissions office too. If you want to set up a virtual appointment that day, um, we do have like a little video chat room that we can. Um, so I would just recommend um, I'm going to put my email in the chat. And so just feel free to email me um, and I can coordinate that as well if you are but again, you can do those services anytime from your couch is what we've been liking to say, which is really nice. So I don't see any questions, but um, the, the kind of the last thing that I like to end on, but of course we can always take more questions, is like what's one experience um, that you've had with a student or you've had yourself um, that really, like, you know, warms your heart and makes you feel like Wright State is a good, like a good opportunity for students and that we have the services that would truly help students. So this can be anybody, everybody, um, just not all at one time. Anybody have an example? I do. There we go. So on Friday of last week, I met a student on campus to turn in some equipment who is graduating and she um, did not get diagnosed with her disability until her sophomore year. And then she registered with us and, um, you know, she used her accommodations consistently for her remaining years at Wright State. And you could definitely see the difference that utilizing her accommodations made between her freshman year and then her remaining years. And so now she is a college graduate and looking for a job, um, but she was just a delight to work with over the years. And I hope that uh, if you are thinking about registering with us, you'll choose to do so and actively utilize your accommodations while you are a student.
Anybody else? These are examples that anybody wants to share. All right, well, I'm putting our contact information back on the screen. Of course, we're going to hang out here for a few seconds, uh, monitor the chat, make sure no one has any questions. But I do want you all to know that you can reach out to the Office of Disability Services. I have their phone number, email, website on there. Again, they have virtual hours. And then also the undergraduate admissions information. Um, you know, we're always happy to serve as a kind of middleman to help you get connected to whoever you need to get connected with. Um, it often comes in handy if you need um, connections with lots of different offices. Um, and we do have in person hours. Um, try to call beforehand just to make sure that um, everything is safe by the time you get here. But um, we also are available by phone and email, especially going into the holidays. Um, you'll you might have a few questions, um, but I will leave the floor open to anyone who has questions either in the chat. And then if anyone else wanted to continue on and share any um thing that we might have missed or anything like that just feel free are there any questions that the attendees have uh, regarding raise or physical support or anything that we can give uh, some greater detail for you or questions about the college accommodation plan meetings what you know what is involved with that and how you schedule that does any does anyone have any questions related to that and if you don't feel comfortable asking verbally, you can you can type it in the chat and then we're happy to answer. And I always like to say this too, that if, if you need access to the chat um, and you don't see it, you should have a toolbar at the bottom of your screen um that has the little it's just like a little chat bubble that you can click on and it pulls up the chat um i we've had a couple of students use it so i think um people are finding it but again just put those in the chat because we want to make sure that we're answering your specific questions And Grace sent a private message, um, but she just said thank you for putting this together. So I also want to say thank you to all the panelists as well. Thank Happy you. to be here. Thank you. Happy holidays to everyone. Looks like that was the last attendee that dropped off. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Well, thanks. Um, I think the holidays scared everyone away a little bit, maybe. Um, but thank you guys for coming. Sure. Um, we're going to put this on the website. I might also put this recording and then also just your video on because we just have like a little part on our visit page. Sure. Um, and so that would be good for someone who wants to come visit to see your guys' information as well. Um, if you guys ever need anything, just let me know. But thanks for spending a half an hour of your evening with us, and I hope you all have a happy holiday. Sure. Thank you, Paige. Thank you. Take Thank care. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.